Uh, you know that 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 joke right about if you want fast and cheap, good not cheap, cheap not yeah, good yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. That, that triangle. Yeah. These things happen, uh, and these are the things that I think a lot of people don't see. They can tell you, they can promise you, oh, okay, okay, never mind, same price. Hi, welcome to another stay home episode of uh, I don't know this COVID nineteen series. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, so I'm Chen Yu. I'm Herman. And uh, yeah. you know, throughout this is a new series. Welcome to episode one. So over the next few weeks, we're gonna invite uh, people from uh, of different roles to give you a better understanding of what we do in the video uh, industry. So today we have uh, Herman here. He's Hello. a producer. I think seven years, right? Of experience. About okay, lah. About seven years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So lao jiao already. To kick off today's episode, right? Mm. We're gonna start with the role of producer, since both of us are kind of like producers. Yeah, correct. For for people who are not in the industry, let's say you are a business owner, then you might be wondering when you engage a video production house. Yeah. What exactly does a producer do? Usually, a producer will be assigned to you when you engage a video production company, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, what exactly does a producer do? Like concretely, in my perspective would be mostly from a, a corporate video kind of perspective. Like. So, my background is I did I do events. I mean, we both do events. Right. We do, right. We, I used to do weddings. Now we mostly do corporate, corporate. stuff. Yeah. So. I think the the producer will be the first part of contact between the company, mm. the brand, the business, with the vendor that they have chosen. A producer will typically oversee the whole project from start to finish. Along the way, there will be a lot of people, freelancers, and a lot of other uh, expertise that will be brought on board. But they will probably be only uh, part of the project at different stages. Mm. A producer is the one main constant from start to end. Okay. Yeah. So, so kind of like a project manager. Yeah. yeah. So he he, he manage the entire day and make sure that at the end of the day, if you have any complaint, right, mm. it also goes back to him. <laughs> at pre production, he will probably have a meeting with the business owner, mm. they will, uh, or or maybe the marketing person, sales person, or whoever the person is, uh, the video is is made for. They will explore what you want. Mm. Uh, from this video, what you want to achieve from this video, uh, and and who are your target audience, things like that. Then there will be ex- different expertise being brought on board, la, Like your writers, mm. you will have uh, your, your your script writers, your your storyboarding artists, people like that who are very skilled in that specific area to come and craft out your right. your story. Pre production can take out a. a uh, uh, immensely long time. Yeah, yeah, it's um, the planning. Part, yeah, it's the planning so. that is difficult because right. you we need to make sure that uh, everybody firstly is on the same page, and then secondly, when we later talk about production and and then post production, then we will yeah. know why it is important. Uh. Most people when they think about video production, they think of the only the filming yeah, process. The shooting, yes. But that the filming process is actually I would say it's the uh, easiest, easiest and it yeah. takes up the shortest amount of time. Yeah. Because it's just executing what you have, executing out the plan. Yeah, uh. Correct. Correct. Right. So of course the business owner has to provide uh, the bulk of information uh, because you can't expect us from a media industry to know your business. In your Let's say right. for example you right. own a coffee making business. Right? Mm. We we as the creators we don't know what it takes to make coffee. Right? Yeah. yeah. So we need to know what is your company's way of making coffee. So as a business, right, uh, if you are looking to get a video done, right, I think more importantly you should question yourself. Uh, what is what are you trying to achieve with that video? Is it trying to create brand awareness, or are you trying mm. to sell something, or are you trying to uh, promote a cause like yes. doing your CSR? Yeah. Mm. So these are the things that you know can help us better fine tune and maybe brainstorm. It, it might sound easy, right? But actually, a lot of people they a lot yeah, of business owners they actually don't really know. Then yeah. then at the end of the day, they will, they might, especially I think in our experience when we come across people who, again, are with that this magic thing called budget. Then everybody <laughs> wants to achieve. As many things as possible, right? Mm. In one single video, which right. which I think is a, which I think a lot of people tend to fall. It's a trap that most people tend to fall Correct. into, right? Because they, they tend to like, hey, I got okay, I got ten thousand dollars, and I only have ten thousand dollars. I want to do marketing, I want to do sales, I want to do, uh, yeah, uh, I want to I want to do branding, I want to do everything, and then they just want to cram everything in this video. Correct. Then they say. I want it to be two minutes long. <laughs> and then we're like, uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that usually the end product will turn out without a focus, uh, you know, after you yeah. watch it, then you don't know what to take away from that video. If the video tries to convey too much, you might end up conveying nothing. Yeah. yeah. Which right. is why right. I think in the pre-production phase, they will they will be very uh focused on trying to make 
sure that you and him both are on the same page about what kind of video the end product should look like. And everybody needs to be on the aware, same. yeah, they need to be on, on the same, same page. page yeah. Your bosses need to be on the same page especially because right. if your CEO thinks that if he if he sees the storyboard at the last minute, right? Yeah. Normally that's a recipe for disaster because they will they will always have something correct to, to say one. And it might be a very big thing. So we can have a meeting for like 10 weeks, right? And then, and then finally, it nothing. then it turns out uh, your CEO everything. probably wants a complete right. overhaul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that 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 has happened quite a lot. So it's better to get the the relevant the stakeholders, stakeholders yeah, to on board la. as soon as possible. At least correct, let them correct. see lah, right? Correct. Sometimes you might find that your the producer assigned to you might be a very overbearing person, like like he's always trying to go against the go against a business owner about right. his objectives for his. It's not really that they want to go against your wishes or that kind of thing. But it's like it's like any other service provider, right? Like interior design. Sometimes we want ten rooms in a in a three room flat. Mm. I mean sometimes it's just not possible. It's not possible and uh, it's not wise yeah. to do it because you end up having instead of having ten rooms you end up not even having the three rooms that, that right, you, right, you, right. you get what I mean. He doesn't have all the information. He right. he definitely needs your help to give him what you are trying to say. But at the same time he is there to tell you what works and what doesn't. Mm from a video perspective. So actually you should be wary to a producer that is a yes man. Yeah, uh. if he keeps saying, oh, okay, 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 yeah, okay. Then you should be careful yeah. because the end product might not turn out to be what yeah. you think it is. The second phase of this whole video making process is production phase. Uh. So the production, as we mentioned, it can be the easiest part of the project because we get normally uh, your, your, your director of photography, the person who manages how the, 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 the image looks, the gaffers who are the people who do the lighting, the grips who carry the heavy equipment that you see, um, and, and, and the various the makeup, your, yeah, yeah. your, your so your, many roles. Yeah, so too many. And these people normally they are all experts in their own field. So when we get these people on board, right, normally it makes production very seamless and very fast. And they are not cheap. Uh. And they're not cheap uh, because they, 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 cheap, they do their job well. Correct. If your pre-production is done well, you you can sort of gauge how, how many days of shoot you need. Sometimes there will be one day backup plan, but all in all, if your pre-production is done well, you can sort of uh, know how much... It comes with experience. Yeah, how many honest. days yeah. it might take. So that's production. Uh, production is the day where most people are very fixated on production because production look, looks the nicest. You yeah, know, like big, you big cameras, you 20 people, you 40 people on yeah, set. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so again, uh, not they are not there for show. Uh. If they are there for show, then that's not very good. Uh. But they are all there for to purpose, do, to, 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 do, to do the job and do the job there and right fast. A lot of people think that oh, more days means more money. Correct. Which is true, but not every production house is out there to do more days. A lot of us, we also try to think for a customer, we want to mm, get it done mm, in, in, in the reasonable amount of time. I think on the client side, the difficult thing is a lot of times what I face is that a lot of the a lot of our clients, right, they have no they have no control over the timing of the people they want. So basically they need their colleagues to join the filming. Mm. But they don't have control over their schedules. So they might need uh, their CEO's time, they might need their CTO's time, they correct, might need their correct. CIO's time. Yeah. But all of them are not available at the same time. Correct. So inevitably, what this will mean that they have to film on three separate days. Mm. Right. And then, then you'll be like, hey, why my why the price go up? Yeah, why the so much, price uh? go up so but that is how it is because yeah, yeah. that is just because ideally you... if you can, right, everyone should shoot on the same day, ma. Yes. But because of their schedule, then maybe you need to split right. it up into three days. And we will ideally want that. So normally this is this this argument, right, mm. will normally take place during the pre-production phase where people are discussing how many days do they actually need. So recently I, I, I did a project uh, not too long ago for a client. So yes. it was a very straightforward kind of speaker stand in front of a white colour backdrop yeah. and then just talk. So there were about five speakers in total. Yeah. From a producer standpoint that can be done in a day, right? Because the total video is only one minute. So each person yeah. talk about 20 seconds yeah. or even less than that. Some people argue half a day. Ah, <laughs> so the, but of course we need to factor in like makeup yeah, or if, yeah. if it overruns. La. But if, because of scheduling problem, right? The, some of the speakers cannot all, not all the speakers can make it on the same day. Yeah. Eventually, we have to put it on two days. Mm. So the initial quote that I gave them right mm. was X amount, but mm. the fi the final quote right because it needs to be split into two days. It was almost 
Uh, almost, yeah, I, I think it's about 60 or 70 percent higher. It's not because I purposely want to mm. chop them. Yeah, yeah. But because if you split them two days, uh, the first thing is I have to book the studio one more price, time. Yeah. The price is double. Yeah. My equipment rental also double. Yeah. Your makeup artist also double. Yeah. Your crew also double. Yeah. So there are all these costing that is, I think, mm. invisible to 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 the businesses or to the client la. But on the producer side, actually, all these figures mm. is either we go into our own profit margin. Mm. Sometimes we will try to meet in the middle lah, right? Because I know you also don't want to spin into two days, man. Mm. But it's not. We purposely want to yeah, chop yeah. it. It might really be just you know yeah. filming your CEO take one hour and it'll be considered a one day shoot because we will bring the entire crew down yeah. because we cannot say that oh just because it's a one hour shoot we bring less things down Correct. sometimes to maintain the quality we just need that amount of things yeah yeah so it's not like we we want to yeah. make things difficult I think over the next few weeks as we bring more and more people on board right? yeah, yeah. and then and then you will start to understand why the price will go up so high because even if they go down for one hour or two hours, right? Yeah. It, they will still charge their day rate. Yeah, and and the truth is they are entitled to because they, they there's a lot of cost involved, and in in it, it doesn't mean that they bring in less things just because mm, it's a mm. shorter day. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. because if they go down for two hours, uh, basically that day they are blocked out. They they cannot take on any other jobs, so they will still charge you the. That's why they charge you the day rate. Yeah. and it's not wrong. I mean that that is understandable, right? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. understandable. Yeah. Everybody. So, yeah. So that's just something to bear in mind. Uh. To, to the n- people who are not in the industry, mm. the number one concern that they have is, like you said, budget. Yeah. Money, right? Because you need to get approval. Then m- mm. most people, you ask them to spend just $2,000 on a video, they were like, hey, what is my returns? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then they, they will think that, oh, why I just get someone to shoot from carousel, uh, then $300 call team really. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Why do you want to pay production production houses up to like five digits just to get a video done? Mm. The, the truth is that Production can be very easy because you get all these all the right people on board, and mm. and it can be very fast. In fact, everybody wants fast, right? Who wants who wants who wants people to take their own free time? Mm. So, if you want fast, uh, you know that that joke right about if you want fast and cheap, good not cheap, cheap, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. That, that triangle, yeah. the 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 holy triangle, right? Where one thing you cannot have. Fast, yeah, cheap, yeah. And, and good, good at all at the same time, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think if we want fast and good, then it will not be cheap, Yeah. And I think it's always a very fine balance between those three things. The only way that we can bring the cost down, right? Yeah. Is that someone else is paying the debt. Right. Right. If I say, if I tell you now that I can somehow magically make a two-day. Uh, commitment the same price as a one day commitment where do you think who do you think is paying the cost for the for the one day someone is paying for it it can be him it can be me it can be someone down the line and at the end of the day someone has to be paying the tab the worst kind is what you know the worst kind is they say can right then they give you substandard quality because you didn't ah. want to pay. Ah, I can tell you that is the worst thing that can happen to but it's actually quite common yeah yeah that's the worst thing that can happen to, uh, to, to, to you as the person who wants the video because they can tell you they can promise you oh okay okay never mind same price then you you might be very happy at the start but you should also be very wary because how can it be <laughs> right so he might have he might be cost cutting in a way where it eats into the quality of the video mm. to the point where let's say uh, it was dis- y'all can discuss lah, maybe initially it was a two camera thing Right. Then maybe after the discussion, then they say can can can. But maybe secretly the two camera one become GoPro ah. They, yeah, they they maybe cut down the camera to, <laughs> one. to to one camera or maybe they they do away with a professional sound man, which might may or may not work. Depends on the shoot. Yeah yeah yeah. I think I think again like we go back to what we say right. Like a lot of things we can make do without, but yet something has to give. Right? I, I believe everyone kind of like they have an impression of what a video production yeah. should be like. Yeah. Like filming, like you just put a camera there and talk. Right? But actually from the producer POV, right, there's a lot of things that are unseen. Mm-hmm. Like I, logistics, for example, correct. location. Yeah. yeah. So location and 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 everything everything basically affects everything. You know, there, there's something called recce, right? Yeah, in yeah. this in this field, you know, we yeah. talk about recce. It means before the actual shoot, we actually will go down to the location to scout. 
and determine whether it's suitable for filming or not. Mm. But sometimes, you know, you go there, all is fine. But when you go down and shoot, uh, then there's a construction site at the, you know, just beside you and drilling. Mm. Then <laughs> you cannot shoot. Yeah. You The things that you might not ever think about is like, things like weather. Right. Mm, yeah, uh, you might even think that just because you're shooting indoors, right, it's okay. Yeah. But what if you're shooting indoors, and you happen to be shooting in a, in a, in a, in a, in a place, right, with a metal roof, uh. and then you are recording sound, and then it rains. So yes, everybody is dry, but your your shoot cannot go on because the audio guy will just be like, um, guys, correct. <laughs> I'm just Correct. all we are hearing is the the, the rain hitting the, the metal the metal roof. Insert sound effects here. Yeah. yeah. So things like that that you never thought about, right? And 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 what what happens then? What happens uh, if if that happens? Uh, basically, a good production house will have a backup plan. Mm. So for in Singapore, it's very hard to uh, manage security and all that kind of thing because everyone is very wary everywhere you go there needs to be clearance so permits. Need to permits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so all these things if your production house and if your producing team is good they will be able to foresee all these things and and plan properly lah for in, in, and there have been many times when sometimes we go to a place right and then uh, it may not seem to need a permit and then you realise you go there and yeah, then you start yeah. unloading things and then people yeah. come walking up to you and say yeah. hey, uh, excuse me what are you doing here <laughs> so these things happen uh, and these are the things that I think a lot of people don't see yeah. so, so all these things uh, are typically should be done during the pre-production phase where we will go down and have a look at, at all these things to make sure that mm. the production day is all smooth and all these falls onto the responsibility of the producer and, he, and the people helping him uh. Actually, not too long ago, we actually did a video, right, for BIA, remember? Yeah, yeah, so actually, we, <laughs> actually we did a video for, for our friend. And then actually, what happened was that, uh, that, no. that video, firstly, uh, the video was, it was a very, how do you say, it, 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 we had limited resources as well. We didn't have very all, limited, we didn't have all the money in the world, but, but, we, but we still wanted to do a good job. So, but, but mm. that being said, right, obviously, some things have to give. Right. Right? So you, you didn't have the luxury to do a recce. Mm. Like we didn't have the luxury to do it right? So what happened was that actually the interview segment like We wanted to do it at a, at a, cafe. At a cafe Yeah, so <laughs> see, see budget right So how the cafe came about was that Our our talent right Who is also the, the, the owner of, 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 the, of, of the brand that we are promoting he, he also managed to get a few of his friends to help out So actually the cafe belongs to his friend mm. yeah, So it's a lot of favours right Which which would be fine But if, you know when you talk about favours right Things tend to be a bit hard to uh, You cannot just ask them to yeah. shut down their cafe la, Correct, basically. you can't ask them to shut down their yeah. cafe for your filming So what happened was that we went to the cafe It was quiet for sure But what happened was that there was a great food counter at the back So it was like <laughs> ding 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 yeah. So actually the, the, the cafe was quiet but the grab food counter uh, that was uh, sharing their kitchen, right? Yeah, yeah, was yeah, yeah. was actually uh, beeping away. So yeah, uh, as a producer, that will be the producer's role, la. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that will be that was actually something that we that we that we that didn't manage to do. But but again, it's because of all these uh, budget mm. issues and lack of uh, uh, time and money. That's why we say if your video is very important, you cannot afford to have all these things. Can, can you imagine if you are interviewing your CEO and these things happen? Correct. It, it won't. It won't. It won't. It won't look nice, lah. Yeah. Then you will wish that you didn't save that money. Then in the end, what happened was that okay, we we managed to uh, go to a different location because again, it's good for a producer to be prepared, right, for all these things. Honestly, for the both of us, right, we were already a bit. We actually kind of predicted that a cafe might be a bit noisy mm. so we actually like tried to think about whether there's an alternate location and in the end we managed to find one uh. so we, we in the end the interview was conducted in a gym instead so being a producer is also um, about a, a good producer will have the ability to think on his or her feet yeah, and, and, and to a force uh, because of the experience adaptability la. right then after the whole production, the the next thing will be post production, right? And this mm. and this will be putting together the shots, any uh, sound effects, uh, any graphics elements, mm. which is very big deal now because every video now kind of needs to have graphics, right? Yeah, they want people, they want to have uh, some supers, some graphs, some animation. It's actually a lot of parts coming together. So post production is also another big chunk uh, mm. that can take up a very they can take up quite a long amount time. of time. 
Correct. Uh, depending on how heavy the post production is. Correct. And it, honestly, if your planning again is done correctly, the storyboarding is done right. Then normally, it's a simple process. Uh, normally, but obviously, the editor still is still has a lot of work to do. True. Yeah, because true. Uh, sh- now now he or she is given the job of making sure that your video. Because things when you plan to shoot in certain way, right? On the actual day of shoot, like just not what we yeah, mentioned, right? It, roof, roof raining, interview cannot it, do. It will not be a one to one thing. Yeah, yeah, it might not yeah, be a one to one. It's very hard to get a one to one. Yeah, your story because book. things change on, on the set. day of production. Correct. So things might change, and uh, of course, on that day, the production team will try to keep everything. Will still try to meet the objectives right. of the initial plan. Correct. And you will, there's a running joke in our industry called fixing post, right? Yes. <laughs> so there's the, this thing. Yeah. The post people hate it. Yeah. So the, so post people they don't like to hear fixing post, right? So but but it's a it's a running joke basically. We are saying that whatever we did not do properly in pre production, we yeah. can fix it in post, which uh is not always the case. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Some things cannot fix in post, uh. Yeah. Right, so right. so 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 editors don't really like here. Right? Your graphics artists they don't like here. Right? Yeah. There are some. Some lower budget stuff you will only probably need to do an edit. Mm. So it's probably just the music underneath the thing and then we, we editing the content. But then obviously you go into the higher uh, production, you actually have sound design. Things like sound, sound design, design uh, uh, color. You have color grading. Correct. Yeah, so color grading is just basically um, okay, tweaking like the Example colors. of color grading, uh, this is the image now. Right? <laughs> Yeah. After graded. So, yeah. Before graded. Yeah. So this this this, <laughs> this is grading. So it's basically adding a creative uh a look to your video. Right. And this 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 might not be so applicable to uh, corporate, corporate videos. Correct. Uh corporate videos tend to only do a little bit of what we call color correction. So mm. it's just making the image look, look correct. correct. Yeah, look correct. So as long as the as long as your CEO's face is not overly blue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, but color grading in films and all that or it's in a, or in bigger things yeah. it's a, it's a creative, artistic choice yeah, arti- uh, yeah, correct, yeah artistic you might choice. want the person to look a bit blue because he's in a he, he feels depressed sad. yeah that uh, kind of thing uh, so so this is what we call a uh, uh, coloring to 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 the style and to the mood of the of the film which not every production requires some just need a basic right. correction and all that yeah so so again uh, different productions call for different levels of intensity. Yeah. So in, hopefully yeah. in the future episodes we can have a colorist on board. Yeah, it's a very it's correct. a very interesting job. It's a very interesting job. It's basically Instagram filters on steroids. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. They do not swipe, they use wheels, you know. Yeah, they have a console to correct, do it. Correct. And, and yeah. it's very cool. And 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 it's not just uh tapping on your what X Pro 2 <laughs> or like your autumn filters and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so it's, it's all it's, it's a very uh, yeah. There's actually uh you got swear word now. Yeah, there's a lot. There's, there's of, a uh, school of thought to it. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, that's the thing, right? In our line of work, that everybody has as a part to play. I think what we need to let all the business owners and and people and people who are who are actually going to make a video of their own, right? They need to know that every part of this production is uh you can do away with everything. That's the truth. But your production house will probably tell you that okay, there are trade offs. There are trade offs. There are trade offs. Yeah. With everything, there's trade offs. Yeah. yeah. It's not only our industry. Every other industry, you want to cut down something, it's not mm. impossible. It's just that you need to. Something has to give. Again, a good production company will help you to manage this, lah. If your production company insists on doing color grading, right? It might be because they and they want to charge you for it, right? Yeah. Then. You, you, you kind of need to see how it is because I think it has to be down go down to communication uh. like mm. Mm, the truth is you can do away without color grading at the end of the day different people will have different budgets different budgets will have different mm. uh, output and I think uh, it is not we, we are not here to say that there needs to be if you are not paying for this amount of quality you are a second class person uh, at this point of time I, I want to say that if 
if your producer recommends you something, right? You know, if you watch a lot of our videos, uh, <laughs> then maybe you have a better understanding of what the production is. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. your production, if your producer try to bomb you, uh, <laughs> and tell you that your corporate video need to send for uh, like some fancy 5.1 surround sound sound design uh, yeah. uh, and sound mixing, uh, then you know that he's trying to bullshit you. But I can only assure you that is for most for the most part, people have have your have your best interests at heart. Yeah, and, and they mm. will want to do the best that they can because, do. because if, it, if it's done well, they also look good. Right? Yeah, it yeah. goes into their portfolio. Right? Right. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So they, everybody wants to do a good video. If you want first class quality with yeah. second grade yeah. budgets, right, then, then, then you need to you need to be taking price. So it's like you want to roll in a Toyota or you want to roll in a Rolls Royce. <laughs> yeah. It both gets you to your destination. Yeah, right? correct. But, how good but is the sometimes, ride? yeah, exactly. Sometimes when you see it in the Rolls Royce, it just shook la. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it looks better on you lah. If you have a better Sorry, produced bro. video, then it reflects better on your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. If you see, if you go to a website, then you see a video that's done correct, that correct. looks like someone who did it with like you know Windows Movie Maker. La. Then you will you have a good impression of that company. La. Correct, correct. So I mean, if you just take everybody wants to be Apple, right? But Apple puts a lot of money into their into their marketing videos. Right. Yeah, they can put it's like all very polish. That's why I say the producer cares about money. And and he's there to make sure that your video is done to the best it can be with the given amount of money. Mm. Yeah. But at the same time we all know that we are here working working means we have to profit in some way. Lah. Yeah la, we yeah. are not, We're not here to work we cannot for work free. for free man. Yeah, so man. there is that Profit that we are also uh, looking to make, how much that profit is, that's the difference. La. But that's not for me to say what each uh, company is looking to, yeah, to la, make. Yeah. La. That's, that's a bit sensitive. Yeah. So, again, all these kind of things, as a production company, we can only advise. We know that we are not in a position to fight for budgets with your company. But, right. but we are here to say, educate, la, maybe, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. to say that there's a time and place for everything. Correct, correct. Yeah. Probably one takeaway is that. Mm. It's really to know that your production company, the producer mm. there, is really you. You need to find someone who is there, and you can tell whether this person is for is, is speaking for his own benefit or for your benefit also. And then from there, you all can foster a very healthy relationship. So I think what we have discussed today is basically what is the drop of a what what who you are going if you are a business owner right like who is the person that you will. That's right. We put in touch with so normally we put in touch with a producer la. yeah. So <laughs> the producer will will be the one who will hold your hand throughout the whole process and make right. and be your point of contact. We want to foster partnerships, but not not a master slave kind of correct, relationship correct, correct. With, with our clients. Yeah, yeah. And I think now because everybody is suddenly very digitally in tune right because of the virus situation right? yeah yeah so maybe after now there's a lot of hype about live streaming and mm. then uh once our economy starts to recover i think a lot of people will be re starting to consider video production right even more seriously and mm. maybe you know schools will be ramping up their e-learning materials and all that kind of thing so i think that this video production uh, series right can help to maybe share with your some insights on what it really means to make a video mm. and so that uh, you all will be more well informed both sides will be more well informed so that when when both sides come together to make a video right, it can be a very wholesome discussion right? so we hope that it has been like informative right, at least so if you have any questions you can drop them down in the comments below